So welcome to our fourth tutorial in our series, and here we're going to run you through how to quickly change behaviors in uh, characters. So in our last tutorial, we created Mormal, uh, our goblin friend, but it turned out he had a default behavior that made him an enemy to our character. So we want this guy to be our friend. So how do we do that? And this is where we start to expose really the core of Project Spark, which is a code, uh, or what we call K-code, and brains, where you can actually create code. So we want to go to the modifier of this character, Morval, right here. And you'll see uh, a brain option up the top, um, which uh, you can open up with Y. If you're on keyboard mouse, by clicking on this character, you'll see also the brain icon right here. And uh, both those can be used to go ahead and open up this guy's brain. So we're going to do that with Y. And this is uh, the brain of uh, all characters in Project Spark. And you'll see this guy has stuff going on here. He has stuff on this win side and stuff on this do side. And uh, what does this all mean? So this is something that we're really going to be focusing uh, a lot on in um, a lot of our tutorials. Here we are going to be just going through the kind of the basics of understanding of, of what exactly a brain is and what it does and uh, how you can start to play around with it. So most things in Project Spark come with a default brain inside of them. Um, and Morble the Goblin is one of those things. And he, he came with a default melee enemy brain, which you can see that uh, that's what the name of the brain is called at the very top left-hand side. So uh, by opening up our uh, brain menu, we uh, have a few different things we can do. We have uh, uh, different pages. We can uh, copy and paste and create and delete, um, which we'll get into at some other point. We have uh, the ability to rename the name of this brain, to save this brain to my brain gallery, or to go ahead and open my brain gallery. So let's go ahead and open our brain gallery right here. And um, what you'll see is you'll see a lot of different brains right here. And one of those is our enemy brain. And the enemy brain is the brain that's currently on Morble the Goblin. So if we select that, you'll see it's, it, it uh, has this brain again. So very simply, what we can do uh, is go to Brain Gallery, and we are going to choose a follower brain, uh, which you will find uh, right here. So we have a follower, we have a bunch of different follower options. We have a healer, we have a melee, we have a ranged, ranged and melee, a warrior. Uh, we're just going to do a normal uh, follower. So we're going to select that, and uh, now we have a normal follower who's following me. And just like that, we've uh, already changed his behaviors. Let's just quickly jump into test mode to show you that. And uh, now we go over to him, and he says, I'm here to help. And he's going to follow me around with uh, his little torch. And uh, remember, we made him slow moving, so he's going to move pretty slow while following me. So uh, now, for instance, let's just start to modify this a tiny bit. Let's not worry about creating code. Let's just worry about modifying code so you, you kind of understand how it works. So code works uh, on a sort of uh, statement system. When something happens, this brain does something. Now, the easiest way to understand that is by actually going into our character brain, uh, our default character brain, because it has some things that are, that are pretty easy to understand. So when A is pressed, do jump. As you might expect, what that means is when you, you press A on your controller, your character is going to jump. When you press X on your controller, your character is going to attack. When you uh, press Y on your controller, your character is going to shoot. And now, because we don't have a pressed thing right here, it also means that if you hold down on Y, they're, they're going to keep on shooting. So that's kind of the basics of how things are set up. When something happens, it does something. Or if you have nothing on the win side, it means it always does this. So like a great example of that is you, know, you, you need cameras in a video game or a creation just so you are actually looking at something. So for instance, our main character has a follow camera and this, char this camera follows them around wherever they go. We want this to always be following them around so we have nothing on the win side. A and that allows this thing to always happen. Now when you have something on the, on the win side that says once, that means this is only set one time. So for instance, my character is on team number one. And if we look into Morble the Goblin, we've set him, so he's also in team number one. So that's great. That means they're on the same team. And that means they're friends, and that's really what we are looking for. So the other thing to uh, quickly look at is the fact that um, why is this line here indented? And uh, that's a child line, and this here is a parent line. And basically, a child line sort of, just like children inherit the traits of their parents, a child line will inherit 
whatever is happening with its parent. So uh, from its parent, this thing is happening once. So that means that also the child will also be setting team equals team one once as well because it's inheriting that from there. So just to quickly change something around, let's make our goblin guy, instead of right now he's equipping a woodsman torch just this one time as soon as it starts, let's instead make him equip something else. So let's just jump into, uh, let's just jump in here. And when you open up code, you get this uh, whole code tile. Um, and uh, it gives you a lot of different options. You have a lot of different folders. Um, most folders have different pages as well. So you have uh, different pages that you can click on. And you want to find something that, um, a folder that fits around with what you're looking for. So here I'm looking to equip an object. So I go to the objects folder and then I want to find something for my gallery and have them equip that. So I open up my gallery and it's going to open this this up and let us let's just go through all these objects and pick a really random thing for him to equip um and you know what i'm gonna say let's have him equip a really random thing like a cattail plant why not because you can really have anything do anything in project spark and just like that i've modified this one line of code right here so let's go ahead and go into test mode and see what happens. Now, same thing, but he's now holding little cattails. Before he was holding his little uh, torch, now he's going to hold that cattails, and that's going to go around with him wherever he's running. So uh, he looks a lot friendlier than he did when he had that little torch there. So that, that's great. So that's just a... That's just really scratching the surface of what you can do with code in Project Spark. This is the thing that allows you to make whatever you want to. And we're going to really be spending a lot of time with this as we move forward in our tutorials. So this is the point where I stop and we take a look back and we give you the option of where do you want to go from here. So the only thing we've done really is built our character, built a house, and built his friend Morble the Goblin. But you probably have an idea of what kind of game or creation you might want to make in Project Spark. So this is the chance where you kind of choose where you go from here with our tutorial series. So check the description below for all of the different tutorial modules we have available for you. This is the chance where you get to choose what kind of game you want to make and follow along with our different tutorial series on making that exact game. Whether it's an RPG, 2D side scroller, we're going to continue to add more modules to the series. So uh, keep on checking back and see what other types of games you uh, might want to learn how to make inside of Project Spark. So we'll see you in whatever adventure you choose next.